Hi, my name is Taylor Brown. Today I'm presenting a case presentation. Uh, this is titled Traumatic Brown Saccard Syndrome, a Review of Anatomy and Imaging. I have my disclosures. Brown Saccard Syndrome represents a cord hemitransection, which involves several white matter tracts. This is a rare type of cord injury with some incidences reported between one half to two cases per one million people a year. There's a specific constellation of clinical symptoms, which include ipsilateral paralysis, ipsilateral loss of touch, vibration, proprioception, as well as a contralateral loss of pain and temperature sensation. There are additionally some associated um, findings which may be present clinically, including spinal neurogenic type shock, CSF leaks or Horner syndrome, depending on the level involved. This brings us to our case at hand, which involves an intoxicated 20-year-old male who presented as a trauma after an assault. The patient endured some lower extremity pain and decreased sensation. Uh, on initial exam, there's a 1.5 centimeter stab wound to the back. Uh, however, the patient's exam, in particular the neuro exam, was unreliable due to overall patient intoxication and a level of pain patient was feeling. Uh, the patient's blood pressure was initially low, 79 over 35, though corrected with fluids. There is no obvious source of bleeding which could account for this uh, blood pressure immediately. The trauma team elected to obtain CT, which is shown here uh, with CT of the thoracic spine. This demonstrated a fracture through the facet at the upper thoracic spine, including a displaced fragment, which was visualized within the spinal canal on axial images. Based on the CT findings, an MRI was recommended. The MRI images are shown here with stir images on screen left, demonstrating a soft tissue stab wound extending to the level of the thoracic spine with the pink arrow um, on screen right. There's additionally a large dorsal epidural fluid collection pointed out with a green arrow, as well as a partial cord transection pointed out with the red arrow. These findings are also demonstrated on the T2 weighted images. Again, here we have a partial cord transection, which is visualized with the red arrow, a large dorsal epidural fluid collection with the green arrow, and here we can see a dural tear with the blue arrow. Findings are again shown here with the T2 axial images. The blue arrow points out the dural tear, and red arrows point out a left hemicore transection. Given the MRI findings of left sided core transection, neurology and neurosurgery were consulted. On neurology examination, they were able to find left lower extremity allodynia, areflexia, and flaccid paralysis, as well as right lower extremity decreased sensation of pain. These findings were felt overall likely to be related to brown saccard syndrome. The patient was admitted to the hospital and treated non-operatively, for which the patient did well. On hospital day six, however, the, hospital, the patient did endorse um, orthostatic headache and a repeat MRI was ordered and demonstrated growth of that epidural fluid collection, which is concerning for a growing CSF leak. Surgery at that time was, however, deferred until the patient could follow up. This brings us to a discussion of the major spinal tracts, three of which will be discussed here as they relate to Brown Saccard syndrome. These include the dorsal column, the lateral cortical spinal tract, and the lateral spinal thalamic tract. The dorsal column is a white matter tract which is responsible for proprioception, vibration, and fine touch. Uh, these fibers remain ipsilateral to the nerve roots uh, from the level of the nerve root to the brainstem. Hence, if they are transected, there will be an ipsilateral uh, deficit. The lateral cortical spinal tract communicates motor fibers. These cross uh, at the level of the brainstem 
and or ipsilateral to their exiting nerve root. Therefore, if they are transected, there will be an ipsilateral deficit. These can have both um, lower motor neuron uh, injuries at the level of transection as well as upper motor neuron type injuries inferior to the level where the transection might occur. The lateral spinal thalamic tract communicates fibers related to temperature and pain sensation. These fibers are different from the prior two tracts in that they cross midline at the level of the entering nerve root. Therefore, if they are transected within the cord, the deficit will be on the contralateral side. So these three tracts are responsible for the clinical syndrome of brown saccard syndrome. Again, this is characterized by ipsilateral paralysis, ipsilateral loss of touch and vibration and proprioception, as well as a contralateral loss of pain and temporal sensation. There are some associations which occur with brown saccard syndrome sometimes. These include spinal shock, which can happen anytime the um, cord is injured, CSF leak, which can happen whenever there's a dural tear, as well as Horner syndrome, which can happen to, when there's injury to the spine at high levels of the spinal cord. These are my references.